Well, it's a windy day, but for those of you who have been following my generator project, this little generator here is a little inverter one, it's a cheap one. This one's my alternator attached to a six and a half horsepower Chinese engine. It's a project my brother started about 10 years ago, my late brother. In any case, uh, we're doing a little bit of maths on these. The alternator generator has a 24 volt alternator and it goes straight into my battery bank here. The inverter generator runs a mains voltage charger sitting up in here. That charger is good for 16 amps. If I need to pull all 16 amps, that little Chinese generator works its guts out and I get about 6 hours out of a tank. So the alternator type generator charges my 24 volt batteries directly and pushes about 50 amps. Now, the inverter generator, the way it, in, it achieves that is by creating 12 volts, uh, bringing it up to 240 volts with the inverter, running down a lead, plugging into that, and then bringing it back down to 24 volts to charge a 24 volt bank. That's kind of a lossy way to do it. And it works its guts out. Now, these both have about the same size fuel tank. Okay, so let's talk fuel capacity. This one has a 4 litre tank. This one has a 3.6 litre tank. This one gets about 12 hours under light load, about 5 hours under full load, and charging this at full charge. This guy here, I will run, I've done my maths at the usual usage I've got it set up at, and this will get me about 5.4 hours. However, this will put 50 amps into my batteries, this will put about 16. I've had to adjust the RPM and everything, it's an experimental system, but it is also noisier. This one is relatively quiet on eco mode, but when we're running this hard up, the sound is not a lot different. We might run them both and show you the difference. Now let's look at the process of starting things. Let's put it on start mode, eco mode off, turn our fuel tap on, which has been left on, we'll put it in choke and we'll pull the cord. Which is hard to do one handed. This might be out of fuel. Well, literally the next yank after turning the camera off it started. Turn coke off. So it's not too bad. I can sit beside this in eco mode, it's actually very quiet. So I can't complain about the noise. When you do put this under load though, it'll run at full load and it is a little bit noisier than this. So let's look at ease of starting this one. We do fuel tap on choke on, key on, it's a bit noisier, and yes I'm going to have to put a belt guard on this, and we can see the rolling shutter effect, you can see the timing mark I put on the belt. Now from the perspective of sound, it's not always the problem you think it is, we're in a fairly remote area, there's basically nobody around. We're not worrying too much about other people's uh, concerns. However, sometimes you do find there are people camped down the road a bit and you turn it off late at night like you would any generator. And I've got batteries for that. What we're doing here is we're having the exhaust fire off into the bushes and we have it behind an obstruction and we're not occupying that area too much. Now back over at my buddy's uh, site, it's about 40 metres away, you can barely hear that thing running. In fact, the noise wind or the wind noise is even worse than the generator. So I think we're doing all right. Now we can see in here under load when my batteries have been a bit down overnight. It isn't quite coming up to 28 volts, which is fine. Running AGMs, it's a little bit more gentle on them. I'm also running the RPM just a tiny bit lower than its optimal RPM, just so I don't boil the batteries. Now keep in mind this engine was sitting for a full 10 years. I was purchased brand new, got left sitting in a shed, and then my brother passed away. And uh, so it sat in that shed for a good 10 years. I've come along and I had to give it a bit of cleaning up, I had to fix the float needle, we had to adjust the carby up because it was running rough from new, and uh, they never quite figured it out. I think the float needle or the fuel line had some junk in it from new. So uh, we got it running, it's working quite well now, but I did have to adjust some of the carby settings to get the RPM just right. Now one thing I didn't have to do is worry about the pulley diameters. My brother had already worked that all out well ahead of time, but I am using an A-section belt. 
Now, one little addendum to this, we'll zoom in so we're a bit further away. Those two test points there come off the 12 volt battery. I just checked the voltage on that and it's charging at the 17 volts, quite a bit higher than it should be for a little gel cell. That battery probably won't last all that long. I will have to deal with something about the 12 volt charging side of that soon.